This is the MG4, MG's latest addition to our Australian electric vehicle landscape. And today I'm going to be taking you on a first impressions video. What's it like to drive? How's it handle? What's regen like? That and a lot more. Stay tuned to find out. The MG4 comes in two different varieties, either the Excite, which is your entry level model, or the Essence. Price from a bit over 38,000 before on road costs. This car is gonna do extremely well in Australia because it looks, well, it kind of looks like a bit of a hot hatch. Toyota Corolla meets maybe Yaris? I'm not too sure, but its dimensions are remarkably similar and being a five door hatchback, I think this car will do brilliantly well. The MG4 Excite has a 51 kilowatt hour battery and 350 kilometers of claim range and has power of 125 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque. Then you've got the MG4 Excite and Essence, both in 64 kilowatt hour versions or 450 kilometers of range. These are rear wheel drive and that single motor produces 150 kilowatts or 250 newton meters of torque and the get up and go is pretty good. You can also opt for a long range essence version which has a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. The design of the MG4 is very appealing. Starting off with the rear, if you go for the essence model you get this twin rear spoiler which when coupled with its two-tone exterior paint scheme and it's got the dark privacy blackout rear windows all together it combines beautifully. There's this large spoiler which Maybe the camera doesn't look too appealing, but in person, it actually hits so many right notes. Its profile is pretty sporty looking. MG talks about that when it's even stationary, it should look like it's moving, and I've got to agree with them. From that really sharp line with the LED headlights, through to the way it cuts into the side profile, you've got the two-tone with the top and the dark, and it all works really well. I can imagine the Hoons in Australia choosing this car as the preferred car because you know what? They're going to be bringing out the X Power version, which would mean 0 to 100 case per hour in 3.8 seconds or less. Reviews suggest even less. So, Pocket Rocket, tick. Awesome looking car, tick. Just wait till you see it in the flesh, I guarantee you. And maybe these pictures with the orange don't do it justice, but it's definitely my favorite color right now. I'd like to compare this car to the Toyota Corolla for reasons you'll soon learn about, but also think Cooper Born, which is the other electric offering that you can now get in Australia. Haven't tried it yet, but I believe that it's a very similar size. So it's a great little compact hatchback and for people who like to get around, do daily errands, go to and from work, have that second car, this is definitely gonna be uh, achieving all that and um, a lot more. As it's built on a dedicated electric platform, the MG4 is pretty spacious inside. As I didn't have enough time to get some B-roll of me doing this in the rear, doing saying, here's how, how much headroom I have and oh, here's how much knee room I have. Rest assured, it actually is pretty spacious considering it is actually a hatchback, a small hatchback. Boot has a total capacity of 363 litres with the seats up or put them down and then increases to 1177 with thanks to the 60-40 split seats. And finally, finishing off cargo capacity and space in general, there is no frunk and uh, it's a bit disappointing. There's a plastic cover over the front components here and I tried to shove the camera in to see what was going on and if you ask me, there is definitely plenty of space here to add a frunk. So yeah, MG, please do that. Let's go through packaging as to what you get with each car and I'll be as brief as possible detailing what you get in the Excite versus the Essence version. So kicking off, both get this 10.25 inch screen. It's similar to what I used in the updated 2022 MG ZS EV and has a little slight delay when you tap on the screen. So you tap on it and there's a little bit of a heartbeat and then it will do something. Not exactly, I would say half a second, maybe a quarter of a second delay, um, but it's, it's okay enough. But realistically, it has wide Android Auto and wide Apple CarPlay. So I think you'll be using that and therefore your voice more so than using this touch interface. 
Even on the entry level Essence model, you get MGI Smart Connectivity. That's like a cloud based solution where you can use your phone to turn on your climate, precondition the car, find out what's going on, where the location is, and so on and so forth. Think Tesla app. The Essence model has 17 inch wheels which are alloy and they're hiding behind these plastic covers which actually look pretty good in my opinion. I wasn't able to test the quality of the speakers in the Excite model, it's only got four of them but I was able to actually have a good long go like driving for an hour plus in the Essence and that's got six speakers and actually sounded pretty good. Driver's seat in both models is six way adjustable but in the Excite it's manual whereas in the Essence it's powered. Up front and center to both cars, you've got a seven inch cluster which contains your speed. Uh, on the left side of it, it's also got information about uh, what's around you. Think like the Tesla display, so it will display cars and people and trucks and bins and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool, but you can't touch the screen, mind you. You've got a mixture of USB-A and USB-C ports, but one of them needs to be dedicated to actually providing either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. In the back there's no rear vent, just the one USB socket, so that's a little bit disappointing and it would have been nice to see, at least on the Essence trim level, a rear vent here. Let's talk now about what you get in addition to that by shifting up just several thousand dollars to the Essence range. You now get 360 degree camera suite, that twin aero rear spoiler like I spoke about before, 18 inch alloy wheels, automatic climate control, wireless phone charging on this little pad at the front here and satellite navigation which I think in 2023 when you've got offerings from Apple and Android why would you bother? Material use in the MG4 is a mixed bag of very good fabric seats through to some very hard plastics that you actually can touch let's say on the doors. Um, I, I think it's quite reasonable to expect this in an entry level sort of vehicle that is uh, trying to compete with the likes of a Toyota Corolla. And so if you know what that's like, or a Yaris, yeah, this is the same sort of thing. All models get vehicle to load capability, which is rated at 3.3 kilowatts. However, in the uh, press event where they talked about the car and its features and things like that, there was mention of it being limited to about 2.5 or something like that and 10 amp um, just to adhere to Australian um, electricity standards and safety. So I'll be curious to see in testing when I get one later on, uh, that's a review unit mind you, uh, how that actually works out. So just yeah, I'll definitely push it to its limits. Charging the MG4 is thankfully improved upon the MG ZS EV and better than what's coming up very soon, the BYD Dolphin. And starting out with the entry level models, you get 88 kilowatts of DC fast charging. And that bumps up if you go to the Essence long range uh, to 140 kilowatts. And when we're talking about charging your car, sure, not a lot of people have to do DC fast charging unless maybe you're away from home or you're doing a that road trip. Uh, so if you're charging at home, it's good to know it's got an onboard AC charger that's rated at 6.6 .6 on a single phase or up to 11 kilowatts on a three phase. The entry one has, has a lithium ion phosphate battery and so it's great for sustained peak um, uh, charging and the others are NMC and uh, yeah but supposedly have a very similar uh, charging profile. So I'd be curious in testing later on as to whether or not it does behave like this graph or whether or not um, it achieves a faster rate which by all rights it should. So after spending more than half a day driving this car, it's about well, six, seven hours of driving, several hundred kilometers, I was averaging 18 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. Uh, not exactly very efficient, but mind you, um, we were doing a lot of up and down hills, so to speak, and a lot of freeway driving in parts. So it wasn't maybe the best indication of what you're going to be getting in say the urban environment or maybe it's more representative of what you might get if you're doing freeway driving. Again a long term review would definitely prove or disprove this efficiency figure but nonetheless the claimed range of this to this makes well when you think about the price Australia's best bargain. So let's talk about driving the MG4. First there's no on off button like in the past. 
the, got the key in your pocket, you sit down, you put your foot on the brake and you're holding the brake and the car will turn on and within about a good five seconds or so, it's ready to go. So you use the dial in the center here, right to drive, all the way to the left to reverse center-ish is neutral and then press it down to put it into park and i love this interface by the way so you know compared to the drive stick in a tesla and other vehicles this is my preferred method it's got plenty of get up and go even the entry level model the excite uh, with the smallest battery pack and the least powered motor is able to achieve a sprightly takeoff like i don't think 7.9 seconds is right i'm pretty certain it's faster at least it felt faster and in the other media people who were there all agreed that its uh, acceleration profile is excellent especially if you live in city areas or suburbia you, you're going to love this car because it's going to take a lot of other drivers by surprise about how quickly you get up to 60 k's per hour say as it's rear wheel drive no matter what trim level you choose uh, i always felt that this car was very capable and felt planted assured and handled beautifully it is some local tuning here um, a very uh, low and very thin battery pack uh, get this the battery pack is actually thinner than a can of coke say I'm not, not sponsored by the way coca-cola you can sponsor me if you want to so think of a can of coke and then just reduce that by about another centimeter or two and that's how thin the battery pack is so it's super impressive and then because we're all we're talking about a low car as it is as a sporty car and all those things combined to make the driving experience so good it soaked up bumps really well and when you press go it went and because of that uh, high torque experience that, that is electric cars um, i found this car to be really enjoyable to drive all cars get adaptive cruise control or ACC you got like your acronyms and I felt that this was a bit of a mixed bag in that sure it kept a good safe distance whatever you uh, were set out it does uh, traffic jam assist I think it's TJA <laughs> I've got throws and acronyms your way now uh, so it stops up traffic great um, it matches the car in front sort of follows that but weirdly on freeways and on the highways we did when I set it to let's say 100 110 k's per hour and it was going to go around a corner it would slow down and there's nothing in front of me it's like why is it slowing down it's like reducing by washing off five or six k's per hour off the speed and it was there was no need to do it so it was going around a gentle curve it could have very safely and easily done it at that speed and it was still slowing down and this is supposedly a feature of some of these um, cars and I don't think it's a good feature it's definitely a bad feature it's an annoying feature the MG4 has recently been rated as a five-star ANCAP uh, safe car which makes it extremely safe regen on the MG4 is good coupled to that you can actually do one pedal driving in addition, there's five different drive modes. You've got your usual snow, eco, normal, sport, and custom. And you can dive really deep in here and go crazy. But if you, let's say, select uh, one pedal driving, it disables some of the choices you have, which is, in my opinion, fine, because I'd much rather do one pedal driving than be flaffing around with some profile settings that I probably wouldn't really care about. I did test, by the way, uh, leaving it in a certain mode when I um, walked away from it. So let's say um, one pedal driving with sport mode. Uh, got out, locked the car, came back to it, got back in. And unfortunately, in my experience, but this is only one time I need to do further testing, it defaulted back to normal and no uh, one pedal driving. So I've asked MG if they could do driver pro profiles so that if you've got, let's say, the Essence model, it would remember your mirror and seat position along with your driver settings because it shouldn't change your settings. It shouldn't. It really, you agree? Do you agree? Comment below if you agree. But still, it's good to have all these options in such an affordable electric car. And there you have it, my first impressions of the MG4. I gotta say, this car ticks a lot of boxes. And if you're in the market, considering petrol, diesel, or electric, this is absolutely a car you must try because, you know, if you can afford that mid to high Corolla, you should be looking at this and probably buying it, to be honest. Think about the savings. Petrol, yearly, two, $3,000 at least, servicing on top of that. This is gonna be a quarter to one fifth of that. Servicing every two years, costing you this much money per year. Not to mention, if you can novate lease and the fringe benefit tax savings through that, 
it's a no-brainer jumping into something so good as this good-looking MG4. Ride and handling is excellent. Fit and finish is pretty good too. Sure, there are some plastics in there that are pretty hard touch and feel and all that sort of jazz, but most is okay. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Regen is here. I like to see driver profile settings, mind you, so remembers next time you get back in the car, but maybe in the future they can update that. Anyway, I think that's enough for this video, and I might have done a review by the time you've seen this, so if that video card is here, please do follow the link and check it out. If you don't know when that video is going to be out, because I don't know right now, but it'll hopefully soon, subscribe, turn on notifications so you learn when I've just released a new video. If you want to help my channel out, consider giving me a bit of a coffee tip through Ko-fi, or maybe join Patreon where you get exclusive behind the scenes news and polls that you just don't get here on YouTube. And otherwise, you be good and you be green.